that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened to me. Mm. And so yeah. my mission and purpose for the last over two decades have been to share mm. with those that still go to church to hide and to get them to do whatever I can and be used by the Lord to help them stop hiding and start healing. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, friends. Do you long to be set free from the pain and the shame of your past? You can live a life of freedom and meaning and purpose, even when it doesn't seem possible. Well, my guest, Craig Brown, overcame a life of pain, shame, and destruction, experiencing a major life breakthrough that transformed his entire life. Here to share from his own experience and his new book, Stop Hiding and Start Healing, the secrets that you need to know for recovery, freedom, and purpose. So Craig Brown, I want to welcome you to Inside Voice. I sure appreciate you being here. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you for having me. Well, it's an honor to uh, be able to lock arms with people like you who have come through their, their, their own past and their own pain victoriously. And, you know, so many people right now, especially after the last two years of pandemic, and there's, there's a sense of unraveling and shaking. And that's why I want to have you on the program today, because I really feel like you have a voice that is going to speak into not just the lives of people who are struggling with addiction, but also those who perhaps even in the church are hiding from something. Yeah. So uh, really, let's just start with your own story and you know what, what God did in your own life and some of the traumas that you've been through. What's, sure. what's going on? Um, well, I grew up in the church. My dad was a minister in a mainline denomination, and uh, I loved growing up in the church. I mean, it was yeah. as a young as a young guy, you know, uh, it, our family, you know, it was just, uh, it was just a good experience, you know, just a good experience, uh, until I got to a certain age where I realized that, um, what my dad, you know, what I saw in the pulpit was not what mm. I was seeing behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, my dad had a lot of demons, a lot of anger, and he took it out on my mom and, and my sisters and I, and, Although it was a really good experience, you don't know any better at a very young age, you know, uh, right. but there was pain, shame, you know, guilt, there was hurt. Uh, we, I really didn't have a relationship with him, a real good, close, nurturing, loving, caring relationship with him. And I certainly longed for that. And I needed, I was looking for that guide and looking for that direction and mission and purpose, but I was, certainly wasn't finding it, you know, in that particular environment. But fast forward, you know, that was the start. But then, you know, entering into my youth and then teenage years and mm -hmm. and and so on, I I just uh, I made some really poor choices. You know, I wasn't getting I didn't have a relationship with the Lord for one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeds were planted, but I didn't have uh, I didn't sure. know anything about Jesus, Lord uh, and mm -hmm. Savior and love and grace and mercy. I didn't I wasn't here. Maybe I heard it, but I wasn't. You know, wasn't I? W I didn't have that relationship, yeah. and it was a huge yeah. void. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, um, so I, I, I had no. I was lost. I was kind of empty, and I just had no mission and purpose at all. Um, and I took a job at a business in Washington D.C. that happened to be owned by the biggest cocaine dealer on the East Coast, and mm -hmm. uh, a young guy like myself with no direction, no self discipline, no self control and totally empty, I just got sucked up into that drug life. And wow. it was absolutely horrific, just horrific. And so I ended up in that, you know, that dark pit uh, for years until the Lord, until Jesus set me free. And it mm -hmm. took, uh, I don't have, we don't have the time for me to go, you know, just so many life changing, harmful mm -hmm. situations and pressure that was just built up over all these years. Um, until ironically, uh, uh, you know, God brought me to my dad's bed bedside when he was dying. And uh, as I mentioned the in the first chapter of my book, when the pain is greater than your fear, Brenda, I had so much pain in my life and I was, there was depression, darkness, mm. emptiness. But of all things, he brings me to my dad's bedside. And here's a guy I had no relationship with. And I, uh, 
what I didn't realize back then, and you and I know all about this, God's hand is always on us, always on us. Yeah. And just he's he's so wanting and desiring that desperation moment and that mm -hmm. moment where the pain is greater than our fear of changing. And by standing yeah. by my dad's bedside in the intensive care unit shook me to my core. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have anybody to lead me. Imagine. I didn't have any, you know, any sinner's prayer or anything that I knew. All I knew was everything I had tried failed miserably. And I was filling myself with all the medication to escape the pain. So the next day mm -hmm. I just cried out to God. I cried out, literally crying my eyes out saying, I just can't take this anymore. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, God, take over my life. You know, uh, Jesus, be my healer. Uh, take this pain, take this pressure, take this shame. And Brenda was just miraculous, miraculous. Mm. I had not done drugs or an, I had not, I'd been sober and clean for seven years before I got to my dad's bedside, but I was still miserable. See, people make yeah. the mistake that sobriety and abstinence is it. Oh, wow. You know, exactly. and that's a huge step. It's yeah. a huge step. Mm -hmm. But what about the trauma? Yeah. What about the pain, the shame? You know, what about the hurt? What about everything that you left behind that you've never dealt with mm. before? And that's what I see in people now in church. Mm. They, they go to hide rather than go to heal. Now, they wow. may have changed their lifestyle, may have changed a lot of things. But mm -hmm. what's still there? Mm -hmm. The enemy just poured on the shame year over year over year. And it just it just covers our soul. And there's only one that can crush that, that shame, and that's Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened to me. Mm. And so yeah. my mission and purpose for the last over two decades have been to share mm. with those that still go to church to hide and to get them to do whatever I can and be used by the Lord to help them stop hiding and start healing. Powerful, powerful. And I love the title because of that. It just absolutely says it like it is. And, and that is where we are. I think a lot of cultural influence have, have invaded the church mindset. Um, yeah. You know, we're, and, and we're living in, uh, sadly, a, a post-Christian era right now where, yeah. you know, we're just not relevant anymore. And I think a lot of the reason for that, Craig, is that people are hiding. And how can we be, you know, the, the city on a hill if we're hiding right. what's right. authentic and real on the inside? Right. Speak to that. Well, well, pe well what, people, what people fail to realize is that in Genesis chapter 3, the first thing that Adam and Eve did, first thing they felt was mm -hmm. pain, shame, yeah. guilt. And what did they do? I mean, chapter 2, they, there they was did. no shame. Chapter 3, mm -hmm. shame right. enters in. And yeah. they have been, and we have been hiding ever since. Yeah. Not everybody, but I'm a, mm -hmm. but a, I just see far too many people continue to go to church and they worship and hands lifted and you know they're leading, they're being, you know, they're mm -hmm. doing, uh, serving, they're taking notes, they're being fed, but they get to the parking lot and they breathe a sigh of relief because mm -hmm. no one knows that my life is in turmoil. Yeah. And Brenda, mm -hmm. I've had people come to me five, say five years, 10 years, 20 years, Craig, I should have been here five, 10, 20 years ago. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. and, but again, you know, the timetable for everybody is different and the desperation yeah. and admitting that these things are there still is different for right. every, every single one of us. It took me to stand by my diet, my dad's bedside when he was dying to shape me to mm -hmm. the core. What is it? A DWI, a hurt, a pain, a death, or grief, or yeah. you know, yeah. some life situation to mm -hmm. get to uh, have someone realize I'm no longer afraid of changing. Yeah. But people are so caught up in fear, especially in churches, because you exactly. have to look good. You got to make sure put on the mask, and marriage mm -hmm. is great, and you know that's and that's not. Church should be a place for broken, broken people yeah. to go, mm -hmm. to be real. And it needs mm -hmm. to come from the pulpit first. Mm -hmm. And they have to, you know, it's got to be, let me hear more failure and how to overcome it. Right. And, you know, yeah. let me hear more of that because our mm -hmm. people are in the congregations are yearning for, auth for authentic, 
real failure stories. And yes, they I, are. this is my own personal, this is my own personal observation. It's just, they're just mm -hmm. not getting them. No, they're not. And I think that's probably uh, uh, much of the reason that we're uh, shaking in, in the way that yes. we are right now. And, it, and it's the yeah. it's the voice of God that is shaking things up. And, you know, we're seeing uh, the fruit of this. We're seeing, yeah. uh, unfortunately, because of, of people that have maybe not just been, maybe they don't think they're living hypocritical lives, but they're not in tune with the right. brokenness on the inside of them. And we've led by our egos. We've done things, yeah. you know, from maybe the, the, the worldly corporate model. And, you know, we were chasing after building all these, these empires yeah. and kingdoms yeah. And, yeah. and seeking power. That's and then it. what happened? is it begins to fall apart when God begins to shake the house. And we're seeing the result of that in the news over and over and over. And, over. you know, this is, I, I think it's causing a lot of disillusionment, Craig, but in, in the end, I have to say that God is merciful. And, you know, yes. he doesn't have to defend himself. We don't have to <laughs> defend God here. And what, what's happening is there's a correction. And God yes. wants our attention. And he oh, wants yes. us to come and get honest and to understand that we are broken, that we yeah. are without him. We cannot be whole. Be whole. No. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, Luke 12, 2, you know, everything that is covered will be uncovered and every yeah. secret will be made known. Yeah. And that's God's promise. And that's God's, mm -hmm. it's a gentle warning, you know, yeah. that at some point in time, listen, and that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing all throughout uh, all, all throughout the country in God's church. Yeah. You know, things are yeah. being uncovered. Things, secrets are being, uh, uh, you know, made known. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listen, people are going to church and they're vulnerable. They're hungry. Yeah. They, they want real, they're looking for, re, uh, re, they've been living in somewhat, I know I did, in a false reality. And mm -hmm. church should be a place of reality. You know, mm -hmm. this is, is life this is healing yeah. this is grace uncondition unconditional love and mercy that and god is on the throne no mm -hmm. no one else he is on the throne he's and mm -hmm. the at the foot of the cross is where we should be running with our issues but mm -hmm. far too many of us are again are too are too afraid of what people are going to think about about us sure. and yeah. they're just you know what what are they going to say about me and mm -hmm. the promise I'm going to share with those that are uh, the, your viewers, your listeners, um, at one point in time, when you fully surrender and you, you are earnest about getting well and about being healed, there will be a day where you will not care That's one right. bit <laughs> what anybody right. says about you mm -hmm. because it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You have an audience mm. of three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. That is your audience. Yeah. You yeah. please them and do everything in your power to please them mm -hmm. versus yeah. our warped desires sometimes. Yeah. You know? Well, and well if there's you a pivot, sacrifice. Yeah. Oh, big exactly. time. I'm sorry to cut you off. But yeah, there's a sacrifice involved in, in that level of obedience to Total. responding to the spirit, responding to the word of God. And, you know, I can identify, I mean, I took a lot of criticism uh, a couple of years ago when my book came out and I can, I can identify with you uh, and, and resonate with your own story of, you know, coming back to your father on his deathbed. The same thing happened with me where my father uh, finally came out in the open and what the pain that he carried became too great. Yeah. And knowing that he was facing uh, eternity you know, it was a, a pivotal moment, not just for him, but for me. And, you know, that was a springboard for healing, a uh, real, a real process of healing to yes. take place. And, you know, there's a sacrifice when you choose to say, I'm going to get honest and I'm going to be real. And whoever doesn't want to join that camp, okay. Because, you know, you've got to be committed to that choice and that decision, correct? You do. And listen, <laughs> listen, your healing um, 
is for you and no one else. Right. Your forgiveness is for mm. you and nobody else. His mm. grace and mercy lo is for you mm. and no one else, you know, mm. and it's, you have to be, and I, I don't, I was going to use the word myopic, but you have to be, there's no, nothing more important at all mm -hmm. than our relationship with God. And, and there's nothing more important. Most important things you ever do in life is to learn about you. What yeah. are your character defects? What are your shortcomings? You know, what, you know, what's, what about that anger and these, and the codependency or these other things that you're not quite sure of mm -hmm. learn about them. Yeah. You know, learn about you, you know, mm -hmm. recovery, the way, the way Christ Center recovery is designed when you go through principles and steps and things is the, the first, the first half of them are specifically designed for the personal side of your healing. The latter mm -hmm. portion is for the relational side of your healing. Mm -hmm. So relationships can't heal if you have individuals that are totally dealing with heart, you know, very difficult life issues, denial mm -hmm. and struggle you get well you yeah. get well and mm -hmm. watch everything else in, that you are a part of you will learn how to operate in these other um you know these other tiers mm -hmm. and you will see it takes that mm -hmm. first step though it takes that first step of yeah. just being honest with yourself <laughs> and honest with others and honest with god well, we're fragmented, and, and we became fragmented when uh, uh, the, the, in the fall of man, when yes. sin entered the picture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that people are unknowingly fragmented, disconnected, even with themselves and oh, with God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so there, there's this this ability to even hear his voice. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people want to think they're hearing things, but we're inserting our own agenda. And it, 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 yes. it's a kind of a painful process, really, yes. to uh, come to that place of of letting God uh, really dig and, and uh, un, unearth, uncover the things that we don't like to look at. We've long buried and given, given power to uh, by letting them be what, what motivates us and become the filter for all information. And then our relationships, just as you said, yes. are affected and in, within the church and within our ministries. So tell us about um, how, I mean, is it just people within your church that come through your program? Can they, do they come from oh, all no. over? Uh, we've, uh, we've been serving for the last 23 years. It's really community. We have people that come from all over, you know, we're right outside of Washington DC and we have people that come from the various areas around the area. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. Um, two out of three people, uh, enter into Christ center recovery because of pain, not addiction. Yes. 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 You it's see a lot root. of people see that's the stigma that the enemy uses mm -hmm. to keep good people going to recovery because the word recovery overall is so intimidating. Correct. The, the, my book is rather, uh, you know, I realized I was at the NRB and the looks I would get when people would walk by, <laughs> they, oh. they saw that and they're like, Oh, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. it, you know, I didn't realize that it intimidate. Listen, uh, getting well, being honest and, you know, dealing with, dealing with and recover, just a recovery yeah. intimidates people's denial. It just does at all levels. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you have to get, a, you just have to get around that and you have to get over that. But, uh, but again, a majority of people come in because of pain. They may mm -hmm. not be, you know, they may have had an issue with some type of addiction, but people, but addiction are symptoms, pornography, right. food, <laughs> anger, gambling, mm -hmm. you know, uh, drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. those are the coping mechanisms, but the yeah. Bible is a root is a root issue, self-awareness, self-discovery life manual. It yes. is. So you come in and, you know, I've heard story after story after story about someone that, you know, uh, when, when they pulled back the layers, right. And expose that wounded heart and that hardened heart, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they realized it was their anger issue. It was their anger that was the catalyst for their using. And they just wanted to medicate it. Same with food. You know, what was the catalyst for it? Well, low self-esteem, low, you know, uh, looks so much attention is put on 
Well, I would binge on food and just, you know, but it was my low self-esteem that was a catalyst for me, you know, having food issues. You have to get to the, it's here. It's the root yeah. issues mm -hmm. that are there. And a lot of them have to deal with pain, shame, guilt, mm -hmm. and hurt. You mm -hmm. know, they just, yeah, and you, because yeah. we want to medicate it. We want to run an right. escape. That's exactly. our first inclination is to well, run. It is. It's the, it's our human propensity really. That's, and we're just, the culture reinforces that. Uh, and we do a yes. lot of projecting of lies and, uh, we wear our masks and, uh, yes. but I'm a firm believer that we don't get the real beauty without the pain. We have to yes. go through and, and experience the pain of it. Um, but we don't like to suffer. We don't like the thought of, uh, enduring, but you know, that's, uh, uh and I, I want to bring up too, that this is where, yeah. you know, the power that Jesus offers us is mm -hmm. the power to overcome that pain. It is. But we want to seek after the kind of power that elevates us, that elevates our ego, that yeah. puts us in control. And that's oftentimes not what God is calling us to. And no. we can't be really trusted with that, especially if we're carrying around a lot of baggage. We're going to be abusive in those kinds of situations. Without a so, doubt. So, you know, uh, tell me uh, some of from your own personal journey and testimony where God traded you beauty for mm -hmm. what once was just mere ashes. Oh, everything. Every single part of my being was changed. Every, I mean, mentally emotionally, spiritually, physically, yeah. every wow. area of my life. Uh, mm. there was a How about total relationally. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. Oh, without mm -hmm. a doubt. Yeah. I was very, yeah. Uh, you know, I had a hard time trusting, uh, early on, you know, um, mm -hmm. in relationships and what have you, just because I, I, I came from a very unsafe background. And, right. you know, with a dad dealing with this stuff and a mom that was a uh, enabler, very loving, love them to death. Mm -hmm. Oh, without it, you know, they're both passed on, but they, you know, what we don't realize when we're growing up is that our parents are growing up too. Right. And some did it well. That is true. And some didn't, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. some did it really well and some didn't. But, uh, Brenda, every area of my life, I, I have been working for the last 30 plus years on it, as much as I can, you know, every day, just, you know, and a lot of it is, you know, old patterns or things that can creep in character defects that have been, you know, uh, stripped away may, uh, produce, you know, may show up every now. I just want to be fully aware. I just pray for holy eyes and ears and just a discernment to be able to, for that. And I pray often, da uh, often yeah. daily, uh, increase self-awareness. Lord, how am I really doing? I just ask myself that question. Question I have to ask other people too. Not how are you doing? How are you really doing? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that on a regular basis for years. It's kind of like a, um, you know, a daily inventory, you know, checking up mm -hmm. on ourselves. And, you know, we take care of our cars on a regular schedule. We take care of other things on a regular schedule. When was the last time you took care of yourself on a regular schedule, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually? You know, how oh, am I doing so in these four areas? And yeah. you will realize by journaling, being around safe people, trusted people that you can sit in circles with and just discuss things and talk about the things that you're dealing with in your life. There mm -hmm. is power in circles when they are safe and they are trusted and real people dealing with real life issues. And that yeah. is the is the privilege I've had for over two decades to be able to, to be able to be a part of that and see the Lord snap chain after chain after chain of those that entered in held in bondage and were just beaten down and carrying the, the, the load and such pressure mm. and see them be set free. It's just, yeah. you've experienced it. I've experienced it. Mm. We're around a lot of people in this network that have experienced it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. That is God's work, true work. And that is healing souls and, yeah. um, you know, and that's where the transformation. Dreams. Yeah. The transformation of the inner man really takes place 
on those levels and you know there is a, a cooperating that a, a cooperation we have to yes. partner with God it, 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 we we want to leave it all up to him say you know heal me instantly we like to do the say the <laughs> prayer at the altar sh, you know shunda you're healed and and now you go on and don't bother me with with your problems anymore and it's it, you know it doesn't happen that way healing is a process and uh, and and we're relational with God with yes. ourselves, with our yeah. uh, interpersonal relationships. And yeah. as you were saying that about to this day, and I, I so identify with you there, Craig, of saying, Lord, help me take an inventory here. Am I yeah. doing okay? Will you yeah. show me? You yeah. know, like David said, create in me a clean heart, Absolutely. oh God, and renew yes. a right spirit within me and show me any wicked way that's within me. Uh, there's a, a scripture that I often love to quote because it's just one of my favorites because of my own experience with this. And um, <clears throat> hopefully people don't get tired of it, but it's in the book of Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians. And it says, and we all with unveiled faith, beholding the glory of God, are mm. being transformed yes. into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Amen. Amen. For this comes from the Lord, who is spirit. And Amen. I just really believe that, you know, we, so many people are focused on looking at the outward mirror and how am I looking today? What am I, you know, what's everybody perceiving? But God is calling us to come and stand in the mirror of his glory. Yes. where Wonder. we are changed and we are transformed as we begin to see ourselves the yes. way he sees us, which means, you know what, all the good, all the bad, all the ugly yeah. that we haven't been able to acknowledge, we've been afraid of. Yeah. He wants us to draw, lower the mask. He says, with our face unveiled. Yes. That's Absolutely. a hard place to come to, isn't it, Craig, to be it is. honest with God. It is, but it ba it's back to your comment about pain. You know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, it's important for your audience, and I'm sh you know, for for the, for us, you and I, to remind them mm -hmm. that uh, God uses pain in a mm -hmm. very, very miraculous way, but He never causes the pain. Yes. Ever, He yes. is not that type of God. Mm -hmm. He never causes the pain, mm -hmm. and so many people make the mistake of thinking. Mm -hmm. That oh you know I'm I'm in this situation because mm -hmm. God put me here no mm -hmm. no dear one you're you're mistaken they, there yeah. you know but He will allow us to go through now mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul talks about you know rejoice in our sufferings now that's a hard place to get to mm -hmm. but uh, you mm -hmm. see my color of my hair I can get to that place now and yeah. it's no walk in the park mm -hmm. and it takes me a little while to after I've been slammed to begin to, to praise God and honor him and, you know, give him glory. You know, mm -hmm. it, it takes me a minute to get there, mm -hmm. but that is uh, the posture we have when that, when that does take place will change over time. Whereas your first inclination is to run. Once you, once you are allowed that healing restoration and for him to take you from a place of brokenness to a place of wholeness over time, you will greet those situations. You won't run anymore, but yeah. you'll look at those op look at them as opportunities for me to grow my character, for me to improve my relationships, mm -hmm. for me to be a better people helper, right? To me to be a yeah. better pastor, minister, caregiver, whatever. And I am, I am the res everything I am today. Husband, dad, care people helper is the mm -hmm. result of my deepest, deepest pain. Yes, it is. And I, yes. you know, my choices put me through it. But mm -hmm. God knew then that I'd be speaking with you today and that you mm -hmm. and I together would take our experiences. Right. And, Amen. and allow him to use us to make a difference, a, yes. maybe the smallest difference in mm -hmm. someone's life. It's during your shows. Amen. And that is the power of the redemption, yes. the redeeming grace that God gives to us. It is yeah. almost inconceivable. And I understand when people are living in that smallness of, of their pain and with they're living on the yeah. inside of it. And yeah. they, it's hard to conceive of a, a loving father, a cr yeah. creator who would 
not cause the pain, but come into our pain. You know, the, the Shekinah glory yes. has been described. Uh, I've heard it said that in the Hebrew, it is the female form of God that would come mm. in like a mother and wow. lie with us yep. in our dust and heal us there. Mm. It's a process. And listen, um, I wish we had all day to talk about this, Craig. You are anointed, and uh, I'm so glad to know you, and we bless yeah. you and all the work that you are doing. And I want to thank you for being on the program today. Please uh, give us, uh, tell our, our viewers how we can find you. I'm sure there's sure. going to be people who might want to reach out. Sure. Oh, you're more, and everyone's more than welcome. I uh, My book website is Stop Hiding, Start Healing book. Dot com stop hiding start healing book dot com my personal website is craig d brown dot com craig d brown dot com and i'm also on facebook stop hiding start healing so love to hear from you if i can be of any help encouragement and offer you support or anything i'm available to you awesome thank you so much for being with us today all right brenda thank you and friends, we want to thank you. I'm sure that you are blessed and encouraged because you have been given the grace from God and the mercy from God to be able to find your purpose and to be able to fight forward. Stop hiding and start healing. Thanks for being with us. I'm Brenda Crouch. <laughs>